Okay, so um, like I said, uh, this is interview with the Remy. I'm here with special guest gaming for adoption. Uh, owner is Manny. There you go. And um, thank you so much for chatting with us today. I do appreciate it. Um, so let's start off with uh, tell us a little about yourself. Tell us a little about gaming for adoption and how pretty much everything is for you. Well, first and foremost, thank you very much for having me tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time to include me in your schedule of new and upcoming companies and streamers and organizations. Um, well, Gaming for Adoption started literally on the first day of 2014. Uh, my wife and I decided we're going to, we're straight up going to adopt. We dealt with infertility for quite a while and we spent all our all our savings, just everything was put into fertility treatments. And we decided, you know what, screw it. Whatever we got left, it's going straight to adoption. So around that same time, I started learning more about Twitch and I thought about streaming, but uh, didn't really think much of it. So we just continued getting the plans for the adoption set up and whatnot. And sometime in February, we were ready gung ho. We had everything ready. It was just a matter of time before all the paperwork was approved. And I started streaming around that time. And then in April is when I decided to call it Gaming for Adoption. Before, it was just us adopting. That's when we made the choice. And once we called it Gaming for Adoption, my wife tells me, why don't you make a website? So you could, you know, give give the world our story, you know, our family, our friends, and whoever may want to see it, you know, some sort of a blog. And I said, sure, why not? You know, what do we got to lose? And somewhere along the line, I decided I'm going to incorporate that into the streaming that I just started doing. And the moment I did it, I went from having one viewer to having 12 viewers. And a lot more people came in. They were a lot more interested in what was going on. They were more interested in my gaming and my life and adoption. And I started building relationships from there. I mean, I would just go out and answer all your questions now. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Okay. So give us like a rundown of your journey of this gaming for adoption. Well, we'll start off with your, your adoption process. So kind of when you started the adoption and I know that gaming for adoption raised money for, to help you with the funds, you know, how, how did that go and what kind of, you know, inspired you to do that? Okay. Well, gaming for adoption wasn't something that was intended to be to, for anyone except for myself and my wife. It was just a way of us to call it a fancy name and get people interested in hopes of, you know, raising some funds. And between our family, our friends, and, you know, the gaming community, at the end of the day, we raised a total of $18,000. Wow. And that gave us pretty almost half of the adoption costs was that eighteen grand. So we didn't adopt that free. We're very much in debt because of the adoption. But $18,000 less than we would have been if I never did gaming for adoption. Mm-hmm. So I said, man, that, you know what? That was great. I've had so much support. I've had so much love. So then that, as soon as we adopted in September, I took down everything. I revamped everything. And instead of gaming for adoption being for myself to raise funds for myself, it's not about raising funds anymore. It's not about me. It's not about my wife. It's gaming for adoption now. It's all about creating awareness for adoption. Uh, a lot of people out there go through infertility treatments. Some people can't even do that. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of savings from working a million years since I was very young. And I put it all in there and it didn't work. So we couldn't really start our family. And some people don't even have the privilege of, you know, getting a loan. They don't have enough credit. They don't have uh, income. They don't have anything. So I said, you know what, let's make gaming for adoption, just create awareness of adoption in the gaming community. And we'll see how it goes from there. Ultimately, our goal would be to help people fund their adoptions, uh, whether it's through directly helping a family or going through an organization of some sort, like adoption.com, for example. 
Um, the thing is, early on when I decided to do that, make that change in around September, I started getting a lot of emails from people that want to adopt. Uh, it was actually overwhelming and I went through them and every time I would ask for some sort of personal information, I want to validate that these people are actually trying to adopt. Mm -hmm. And it was just, they would try to give me the runaround, they wouldn't respond. And it became a hassle, it became an issue that people are trying to use us to get money from you people, from our viewers, from the community. Mm -hmm. And it was, it would have turned into a scam. So I said, you know what, we're not taking funds for anyone's adoption until we have a 100% partnership with a company that does background screenings and all that stuff to make it a legitimate fundraising, mm -hmm. you know, fundraising yeah. company. Versus, so, versus you taking money and then not yeah, knowing I don't, if... I don't want to get someone's money and then give it to a family. I don't want to do that. I don't want that money to go through me. If people donate to Gaming for Adoption, it's something that's going to go just for us, for Gaming for Adoption to grow as a company. So mm -hmm. we can make better investments in, you know, websites and graphics and hiring people to make it happen and just moving forward as a company. And I announced not too long ago that 20% uh, of all our profits are going to go to a nonprofit organization. Uh, it's been unclear to a lot of people what we are. We are not a charity. We were supposed to be a charity. That was the goal originally, but... The thing about a charity is you did, you rely a lot on trying to get funds from people. Mm -hmm. So I said, I think we're just better off being a self-sufficient company where we could actually just provide services, which we haven't released yet. We're still working on it. Uh -huh. We'll provide services. We'll make our income for our services, and then 20% will be donated to a charity. So in the sense, we're doing charitable work but we're a self-sustaining company at the same time, Uh huh. if that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I think I, my fault to think that you were a charity. <laughs> well, no, it's everyone. Everyone thinks we're a charity, and I have to constantly go back and tell everybody we are not a charity. Yeah, we do so it's more, work. Mm -hmm. and it's more so that you're, you know, Gaming for Adoption is there to, create awareness about adoption and how the steps you can do that and just kind of bring it within the gaming community because you know you love video games and why not kind of bring that in that light of people to know more about it and that's always a great thing right yeah so and, and, go ahead. Well, i was gonna say if you think about it uh gamers are usually what between let's give adult ages 18 to anywhere around early 40s Mm -hmm. For the most part, that's like prime age to become a parent. So there's a lot of interest in have becoming a parent, whether it's through birth or adoption. There's a, you know, there's a lot of interest, and a lot of people in the at this age can be, you know, the next birth parent, the next adoptive parent, the next person that's struggling with infertility, and they don't have the funds. So being in this community it's kind of like uncharted territory. Like nobody is doing what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting. And we're just here. We're just kind of just hanging out, playing, playing our cards as we're dealt. And right now, creating awareness, just creating awareness, growing the community, getting to know people, networking. But uh, it's going really well. We're, how is We're ready for the next step? How is the company Gaming for Adoption doing so far that you've started in September? Well, financially, we don't get anything yet. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, every now and then we'll get like five bucks from somebody, which just goes straight into you know the bot. For example, the bot costs ten dollars a month. Uh, the website costs X amount, depending on what I put to it, and then adding plugins and add-ons for WordPress costs this amount. So there's a lot of little random costs. It's not a lot. So it's all going straight into, you know, managing gaming for adoption. I've put out of my own pocket, it's probably like a thousand dollars. But uh, right now we're just starting off. So as a company, profit-wise, we're not making anything yet. It's just we're just growing and networking, getting to know the right people, and just getting our name out there. And have you guys um, 
networked in the point of uh, having a pretty good following now and people are you know you have a you have a twitch you have a twitter all those type of things um we you know i I don't know if anyone has watched Gaming for Adoption's Twitch, but they do have a schedule where they have different people streaming. So it's not just Manny, but they have like a schedule of other people streaming on their actual channel. Uh, can you get, give us a little bit more about that? Like, who do you have scheduled to be on your Twitch? Okay, so all these guys are streaming for Gaming for Adoption. In the future, I plan on giving them some sort of reimbursement, maybe not financially until we are huge hopefully someday but in the meantime all i do is i heavily promote these guys in return for what they do for gaming for adoption since i don't have time to stream all the hours that i wish i could they're doing it for me they're doing it for gaming for adoption so we have plans with two organizations that it's not completely ready yet we're still working on it Mm -hmm. But the one that seems to be coming the most, like the earliest, would be with adoption.com. Uh, we're trying to work out a system where we could stream the same way you would stream for Extra Life, mm -hmm. like that, but for adoption.com, but through Gaming for Adoption. So we're going to be somewhere in between there. And like that, we'll be able to have a more direct impact in the adoption community. So if people want to donate to some family that's trying to adopt, they would go through there. Or if they want to donate to a nonprofit adoption organization, they would go through there. So these guys would be our key players into getting people into that and creating awareness for that. So that's our next plan for all our streamers. That's great. And is there a, do you guys have a schedule of when they, when they stream, when everyone yes, stream? You, if you click on where it says official broadcasters, it should link you up to the Google Doc page, which I can link you up here as well. And I, I got timed out. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you click on it, hopefully you don't have, uh, wait, let me see. Can I post here, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. okay so these it's a really bare bones schedule. It's really not pretty, but it gets the job done. It shows you who's going to be on when. And if there's any changes, we'll just update it and you, it updates instantly and people can just go in and check out any changes or whatnot. Okay. That's great. Yes. All righty. So, um, we in so we talked about that gaming for adoption doesn't take actual money to support other, you know, um, families and things like that. But what can we do to support you as a company and be able to, you know, bring people to understand this and want to know more interests? Like what can someone in chat do um, that would be very helpful for gaming for adoption? Okay, well, besides the obvious financial necessity to sustain a company, but we're really not focusing around that right now. The best thing anyone can possibly do is just help us create awareness. Um, link us on your stream, you know, link our stream, link our website, mention us on your Twitter and your Facebook, tell your friends, just network. And it's what it's all about really. And if you're a streamer and you really want to go a step beyond that, you can become what we call a partnered streamer which you would add our logo on your stream and then return I would add your stream on our website which is also there in the gamers corner if you scroll down towards the bottom everybody there has well most of the people there have been with us for you know a very long time mm -hmm. I kind of stopped recruiting months ago and all the new people that have been added they just contacted me uh, so if you really want to help out just in your streamer Add our logo to your stream. Let me know, and then I'll add your stream on our web page. So it's kind of like I scratch your back, you scratch mine situation. We both benefit from it. Because then somebody will go on your stream and say, hey, what's that, Gaming for Adoption? Oh, there you go. Uh, the other day, I don't know if you know Phantom Lord. Yes. I happened to be hanging out on Phantom Lord's channel, and I just typed hi. And Phantom Lord responds. I'm like, why is he <laughs> responding to me? And he's like, oh, hey, Gaming for Adoption, that's pretty cool. I've seen you guys on Twitter. Um, I'm actually thinking of adopting maybe someday, so I'll give you guys a shout-out whenever the time comes. 
And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> totally unexpected. I just said hi. You know, I didn't even think of anything. I just said hi. I don't know. But yeah, something that simple, just the name alone, will attract attention. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Just attracting attention, letting people know about adoption. Uh, if anybody wants to help, we're a direct link from two different worlds, so, you know, the gaming world to the adoption world. So that's why it's called gaming for adoption. We use gaming to link the two worlds together. So primarily we are a gaming type hey, organization. You're really good. We thanks just try follow. to benefit the adoption world. Don't know who you are though, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got a follow on my stream uh, from Demon. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Oh, that's so sweet. She's amazing. She is oh, such she, a yeah. She's a big supporter for a lot of great amount of people that uh, the Lady Remy community and the Heart Gaming community is support. So it's really I really really like her. She's she's awesome. Uh, so what got you into playing video games? So we we didn't really talk about that earlier, but what got you into playing some video games? Well, I mean, when I came to this country, I was six years old. I came from Cuba, and. Uh, I moved into some random, you know, part of my language, some shithole, <laughs> because we had no income, and there happened to be a very nice family living in the shithole next to us, and they had a little boy our age, my age, and they bought me a Nintendo. Awesome. And it was just like, wow. And that's <laughs> how I got introduced to gaming when I was six, and since then, it's been downhill, but... So, um... Thank you. Um, oh, okay, so Demon had a question. Uh, are you planning anything big in the near future for gaming for adoption? I mean, I'm always planning and I'm always changing and I'm always coming up with something else after I made the change. But the biggest plan that I have right now, it's, like a, it's probably with adoption.com. If I could finish up what we've been talking about and and I could land that project because it's not for sure yet. It's kind of a work in progress. If I can land that project, that's going to be tremendous hey, exposure and good. a tremendous opportunity to really make a difference. Because on a daily basis, they get millions of website hits where I get, what, like not even 100 in one day. So if that would be a huge leap of, you know, a huge leap. And hopefully from there, we'll be able to come up with new plans. But if that doesn't go through, I have other plans with other companies that I've been talking with. But it's all right now, my main focus with other companies is trying to get someone that does all the background checks on all these families that are trying to adopt. So then we could actually just start moving on from there. And obviously, I have plans for all the all our broadcasters, the official broadcasters. And sometime in the future, I'll work on something for all our partnered streamers. But there's way too many of them, so not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we have some plans, but nothing major besides adoption.com. That's great. I mean, that's a that's a big plan, though, you know? It's massive. We've been talking for like two weeks. Nonstop. <laughs> it's... That's great. All right. So uh, once again, thank you so much, Manny, for chatting with us and, you know, being on interview with the Remy. And um, if you guys want to check them out, if you guys want to give them a follow, give them a, you know, give them some Remy love. Uh, and you can check them out at um, twitch.tv slash gaming for adoption. And also you can check them out on uh, their website, which is gamingforadoption.org org uh so you guys can check them out there if you want more information if you want to be partnered by gaming for adoption if you want to help and support them you know tweet them out you know follow them you know and just kind of check them out and uh you know they're really really great people um and you know make sure to give them that follow um it's a really really great idea and i will really love what gaming for adoption is and i hope you guys enjoyed this um We'll be doing a little bit more with Gaming for Adoption. Uh, we have I have some things in the works with him, and um, he doesn't know it yet, but I do. Uh, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> yeah, so you can follow them on gaming uh, for the number four adoption on Twitter. Um, so make sure you guys check them out, follow them, give them the Remy love, heart gaming love. And uh, thank you so much again, Manny, for chatting with us. And uh, we hope to do a duo stream and play some Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> thank you very much for having me, Remy. All right. Thanks. Bye, Manny. Bye, Joyce. Thank you. See how it goes from there. Ultimately, our goal would be to help people fund their adoptions, uh, whether it's through directly helping a family or going through an organization of some sort, like adoption.com, for example. Um, the thing is, early on when I decided to do that, make that change in around September, I started getting a lot of emails from people that want to adopt. Uh, it was actually overwhelming, and I went through them, and every time I would ask for some sort of personal information, I want to validate that these people are actually trying to adopt. Mm -hmm. And it was just, they would try to give me the runaround. They wouldn't respond. And it became a hassle. It became an issue that people are trying to use us to get money from you people, from our viewers, from the community. Mm -hmm. And it was, it would have turned into a scam. So I said, you know what, we're not taking funds for anyone's adoption until we have a 100% partnership with a company that does background screenings and all that stuff to make it a legitimate fundraising. A lot more people came in. They were a lot more interested in what was going on. They were more interested in my gaming and my life and adoption. And I started building relationships from there. I mean, I would just go out and answer all your questions now. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Okay. So... Give us like a rundown of your journey of this gaming for adoption. Well, we'll start off with your your adoption process. So kind of when you started the adoption and I know that gaming for adoption raised money for, to help you with the funds, you know, how, how did that go and what kind of, you know, inspired you to do that? Okay. Well, gaming for adoption wasn't something that was intended to be to, for anyone except for myself and my wife. It was just a way of us to call it a fancy name and get people interested in hopes of, you know, raising some funds. And between our family, our friends, and, you know, the gaming community, at the end of the day, we raised a total of $18,000. Wow. And that gave us pretty almost half of the adoption costs was that eighteen grand. So... Okay, so um, like I said, uh, this is Interview with the Remy. I'm here with special guest Gaming for Adoption. Uh, owner is Manny. There you go. And um, thank you so much for chatting with us today. I do appreciate it. Um, so let's start off with uh, tell us a little about yourself. Tell us a little about Gaming for Adoption and how pretty much everything is for you. Well, first and foremost, thank you very much for having me tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time to include me in your schedule of new and upcoming companies and streamers and organizations. Um, well, Gaming for Adoption started literally on the first day of 2014. Uh, my wife and I decided we're going to, we're straight up going to adopt. We dealt with infertility for quite a while and we spent all our like all our savings, just everything was put. We didn't adopt that free. We're very much in debt because of the adoption, but $18,000 less than we would have been if I never did gaming for adoption. Mm -hmm. So I said, man, that, you know what? That was great. I've had so much support. I've had so much love. So then that, as soon as we adopted in September, I took down everything. I revamped everything. And instead of gaming for adoption being for myself, to raise funds for myself, 
it's not about raising funds anymore. It's not about me. It's not about my wife. It's gaming for adoption now. It's all about creating awareness for adoption. Uh, a lot of people out there go through infertility treatments. Some people can't even do that. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of savings from working a million years since I was very young. And I put it all in there and it didn't work. So we couldn't really start our family. And some people don't even have the privilege of, you know, getting a loan. They don't have enough credit. They don't have uh, income. They don't have anything. So I said, you know what, let's make gaming for adoption. Just create awareness of adoption in the gaming community. And we'll get into fertility treatments. And we decided, you know what, screw it. Whatever we got left, it's going straight to adoption. So around that same time, I started learning more about Twitch and I thought about streaming, but I uh, didn't really think much of it. So we just continued getting the plans for the adoption set up and whatnot. And sometime in February, we were ready gung-ho. We had everything ready. It was just a matter of time before all the paperwork was approved. And I started streaming around that time. And then in April is when I decided to call it Gaming for Adoption. Before, it was just us adopting that's when we made the choice and once we called it gaming for adoption my wife tells me why don't you make a website so you could you know give give the world our story you know our family our friends and whoever may want to see it you know some sort of a blog and i said sure why not you know what do we got to lose and somewhere along the line i decided i'm going to incorporate that into the streaming that i just started doing and the moment i did it I went from having one viewer to having 12 viewers. And 